What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be working on my 2016 Ram 1500. Now keep in mind, we are in Michigan, so this is a rust state. So this job might get a little bit ugly. I just did the other side kind of as a practice and it did get a little bit ugly, but I'm going to show you guys what I do to make this job work. A little bit about the truck. 2016, it's got about 64,000 miles on it. And I'm pretty sure the brakes and rotors that are on there are the brakes and rotors that the truck came with. So... 60,000 miles, not bad. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the parts that we ordered, the tools that we're gonna be dealing with, and how we're gonna do the job. Now, because we're doing rear brakes and rotors, it's pretty easy to jack this thing up from the back. You just need to put a jack right underneath the rear axle and just put some jack sounds on both sides. It was, it was easier to put it up this way versus putting it up on the lift. I went ahead with, uh, I believe the brand is called Callahan, and I got it off of Amazon. I'll go ahead and insert a link in the description down below to these parts. We've got the rotors, we've got our pads right here. I'm a little disappointed they didn't include the hardware, the metal brackets that come along with it, but uh, we should be good just with these parts. Talk about the necessary tools first. We've got the 10 millimeter socket for the guide pins. We've got a 21 millimeter for both the, uh, the lug nuts. In my case, I have spline lugs, so I need an adapter. Uh, you'll also need the 21 for the uh, bolts that hold the, um, the caliper bracket, I believe. And then uh, obviously you're gonna need some drivers. So I've got my half inch and my three eighths, I believe. And then we're gonna need a caliper compressor tool right here. And just uh, some, oh yeah, you will need a flathead screwdriver. And I'll show you guys what we use that for. And because we're working with a truck that's uh, been living in a rust state, we will have some persuasion stuff. So we've got some WD-40, some heat, a BFH and a LFH, I guess. <laughs> and uh, what those stand for is big hammer and then little hammer. Uh, left the middle word out. All right, so let's go ahead and get this wheel off. Now, if you don't have power tools like I do, where's my bigger Milwaukee tool? That stubby is actually pretty impressive. Uh, it'll do the job, but uh, if you, like I said, if you don't have power tools, put this thing on the ground first and then loosen up the lugs jack it up and then you could take the lugs off once it's loose but uh yeah let's start with taking the wheel off and then we'll get to the brakes now that we have the wheel off the first thing we're going to do is loosen up this 10 mil right here and then there's another 10 mil that's underneath it those are our guide pins. We're gonna get those out and then we're gonna pry this off. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove this 21 mil. And then there's another 21 mil down below, right there, if you guys can see it. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And then usually I like to loosen up both of them first before I actually completely taking them off. Go. And because I have some power tools, I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of it. I'll go ahead and use a pry bar to get this out. Perks of living in a rust state. Shouldn't have been that bad, but it's okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and take the 21 mil bolts out. <sighs> now keep in mind, I believe these are torqued to about 120 foot pounds. So these uh, are, uh, you're gonna require some muscle to get these off or highly recommend something with a long arm to give you some leverage. And I'll go ahead and insert links in the description down below to some helpful tools. All right, we'll set these bolts aside. All right, so now that we've got our caliper and brake pads completely off, 
the first thing we need to do before we attempt to take the rotor off is there's a mechanism on the inside uh it's kind of like it's your it's your parking brake so there's like a pad over here and a pad over here and when you apply your parking brakes the pads kind of come out against the rotor on the inside and that's how your parking brakes work on this so on the other side there's actually an there's like a, a plastic uh, or there's like a rubber boot that sits up here on this side it actually sits down there so let's see if we can so right there so on the passenger side it's on the bottom on the driver's side it's on the top so it's over here somewhere so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove that rubber boot so you should be able to just pry this off either with like a flat head or with your fingers so give me one second there we go pry that off and what we're gonna do is there's a little i think it's like a cog wheel in there uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go in with our flathead screwdriver and we're going to turn that wheel to loosen it up or to bring the pads inward towards the center. And what that'll do is it'll give us some clearance to pull this rotor off. Right now we are underneath the wheel and if you can see this is the opening where I pulled that rubber boot out. What I'm going to attempt is to spin that little cog wheel on the inside. You can kind of see the teeth and uh, when I spin it, I'm going to go upward. So on the driver's side, you actually go downward. So you're going to go in and then push down. On this side, I'm pretty sure it's upward because we're on the opposite side. So I'm going to try that. And then I'm just going to give it a few spins just to kind of loosen it up. And we'll get to the hard part where we got to use that big effing hammer. So here's the hard part. So picture this, this truck's from 2016, right? Original rotors, and we live in a rust state. So I'm pretty sure that the rust between the inside surface of this rotor and the rust on the inside surface of, I guess the bearing or, you know what I mean? They're pretty much together sealed. So we're going to need some persuasion tools. And what I mean by some persuasion tools I'm pretty sure they make some kind of kit that pulls this off, but I don't have those tools. So I'm gonna use some persuasion tools. So what I'm gonna do is I'm attempting to break the rust that's all up on the inside over here. And then just, I'm just gonna hammer it till this thing comes off. And this is basically what I did for the other side. So it might take a minute. You will need some excessive force. A little like nail hammer is not gonna do the job. You're gonna need some big effing hammers. Now when you're banging this, you want to make sure you avoid the threads as much as possible. Uh, I know this is probably not the greatest for the rear wheel bearings, but you kind of don't have a choice. Another thing you could do is some, take some heat and just kind of help loosen up some of the rust. Now that we've loosened up the, the rotor with uh, some persuasive uh, tools, our hammer and some heat, if you have factory rotors on still, usually they have a, uh, I don't know if, you, if the camera's picking this up, but there's like this little um, spinny washer thing that they put on the threads to hold the rotor in place. And it's just for the sake of uh, installation at the manufacturer. You don't really need this anymore. So to get this off, you just take a flathead screwdriver, pry it back, and then you can probably grab yourself some like wire cutters or something and just like get a grip on it and just pry it off and that's uh that's what you got all right so you should be able to pull this off there we go and then you can kind of see inside where all the rust was holding so yeah that is why we needed some persuasive tools here all right
Now that we have the rotor off, you can see that there's a whole bunch of like rust debris and whatnot. What I like to do is grab like a wire brush and just kind of clean around it. And maybe you could put some like anti-seize or what I'm going to do is just spray some WD-40 or some silicone oil just in this general area. And um, that should do the job for a bit. Alright, so I'll take my uh, PB blaster here and just spray. Alright. Now we've got our new rotor. I'm going to go ahead and put that on. Whenever I do brake jobs, um, after I put on the rotor, what I like to do is grab one of the lug nuts. I just put them on one of the uh, the studs here. And what that will do is hold our rotor in place when we go to install the whole uh, caliper mechanism and the pads and whatnot, so it's not playing around as we're installing that. So we'll just put it on hand tight. There we go, and that helps keep it in place when we go to install the caliper. Well, before we install the caliper, uh, what we're gonna do is compress the piston that's in the caliper. And what I like to do before compressing the piston is just kind of wipe around this rubber boot to make sure there's no debris or anything because when we go to compress this i don't want the rubber boot uh tearing on any of that debris so let's go ahead and do that all right clean this up okay looks fairly clean so to use our caliper compressor tool we're going to use one of our old brake pads and then grab this tool right here and i'll go ahead and insert a link in the description down below to uh these tools right here so that's how we have it right all you got to do is just tighten that mechanism up and it should compress our piston Okay, and then one thing I forgot to mention, when, whenever you uh, take your caliper off, you don't want to leave it dangling because then you could damage brake lines and whatnot. You always want to like set it on something or grab yourself like a bungee cord to uh, let it hang. You just don't want it hanging on the brake line. Never a good idea. So before we install the, uh, the caliper, what I want to do is take the, the slide pins. So you could just, to, to get the slide pins out, just got to force them out by hand here. I'm going to I'm going to take these guide pins right here or these slide pins and we're going to lubricate it. So and I believe they're the same for the top and bottom. All right. Just need a little persuasion and get them out. Set this aside. So what I have here and I can go ahead and insert a link in the description down below to something similar. What I have here is some like high heat um extreme pressure lithium grease. So we'll use these on the slider pins. I always like to um, re-grease the slide pins whenever I'm doing brakes. I've had one car, it was actually my first car, where I had seized pins and that was just a nightmare. I ended up having to replace both calipers, I believe on the rears, but clean the pin, go ahead and apply some grease to it just put a blob maybe on one side and then just kind of lather it with that grease this is probably a little too much but you know we can always clean off the excess grease okay that's why i keep a rag around all right so to install it back just gotta shimmy it through the rubber boot Oh. And just spin it on as you're installing it, just so we can get 
coverage of that grease on the inside too. There we go. I'm gonna get it through the second boot. There we are. And we'll do the same thing for the bottom pin. Clean it off of any debris. You don't want any like rocks or anything like that. Again, this is probably too much, but we can clean off the excess grease. Spit it on as we install it. There we go. All right, I made a mess here. But it's okay, that's what we have a rag for. Yeah, I definitely used too much, but that's all right. We'll just call it rust protection, huh? All right. Usually sometimes when you get a uh, new brake kit, uh, sometimes they'll include uh, the metal bracket or metal hardware that you can replace up here and down here. These are pretty much uh, for the sake of anti-seize, I'm guessing. So that's okay. We don't have to replace them. Looks like these should do the job in the meantime. So to put this back on, we're going to install our 21 millimeter bolts here. And uh, if you have some blue Loctite, you could go ahead and apply some here, but I think uh, we should be fine. And I always like to thread things by hand first before using power tools, depending on how stressed I am. <laughs> I'll go ahead and tighten this up. According to a quick Google search, these two bolts call for 120 foot-pounds of torque. So I'm going to guesstimate that. And if you have something against it, go ahead and leave a nice comment for me in the section down below. We'll call that 120 foot pounds of torque. All right. So before we put our pads on, get some brake clean. And usually when um, you pick up these rotors, a lot of times they'll have a lot of grease or some sort of uh, film on them to prevent them from rusting while they're in their packaging and whatnot. So we want to go ahead and try to get that, that filament off or that grease off or else you're gonna end up with some really smelly brakes for a couple days. So we'll just take some brake clean, clean the inside, clean the outside. And then to install these, should be pretty simple. We'll go ahead and you can see the teeth up here and the teeth down there. So it goes on like that. Let's see if I can do this. Like that. All right, look at that. And then if you see down here, these ears, you actually pry them back and then, so we're gonna pry this ear down uh, push that in and then same thing with up top So kind of like, like that There we go So usually what I found uh, is easy is kind of face the brake pad like that kind of towards you guys And then spin it onto the teeth. All right, I'm gonna pry that metal piece back. And they are installed. So let's go ahead and get our caliper on. So I'll push the slide pins back. Line 
it up. Grab our pins right here. Start the threading by hand. Grab our other 10 mil. Okay, once they are threaded, I can go ahead and use my tool. Okay, so for these uh, guide pins, they actually call for 32 foot pounds of torque. All right, so we'll call that. And then, okay, that should be good. All right, now we're not done yet. Remember that uh, cog wheel that we spun in the beginning? We gotta go back and um, put some tension on it or else our emergency brake won't work as well. So let's go back underneath. All right, so before we go down there to uh, spin that cog wheel, this is the rubber boot that came off. What I like to do is uh, spray some uh, WD-40 or some silicone oil on it just to make it easier to slide on when it's time to install it. So we'll set that aside right there. All right, getting up close and personal. So we'll bring that cog wheel back down. A few spins. Kind of listen for it. I think we'll call that good. And then uh, if our e-brake doesn't work as well as we like it, we can always come back and readjust it. So we'll install our rubber boot. Okay. Okay. And then whenever you're installing your wheels, you always wanna thread the lugs on first by hand, and then you could use your power tools. And then when you're tightening your lugs, you want to go ahead and do a star pattern. So in my case, we're going to draw a star. We'll start with here, go up here, and so forth. That way it evenly puts the wheel back on. All right, so what I usually like to do after a brake job, um, just because we compress those pistons, we wanna go ahead and seat the uh, brake pads in its uh, proper spot. So before I turn on the truck, what I'll do is I'll pump the brakes just to get those pistons to seat in its place. And then we can go ahead and turn on the truck. Excuse the mess. And then I'll do that again. You can probably hear my exhaust manifold leak common thing with these hemis. Another thing that I usually like to do whenever I'm doing brakes is uh, after I get done installing it and pumping the brakes and whatnot, uh, I'll go on a drive and go to like an empty area or like empty road. And what I'll do is I'll get it up to about like 40 miles, 40 miles per hour and then come to like an aggressive stop. And what that does is like two things. I'm not sure if you really need to do it. It's just kind of one of those things that's been passed down to me from like my grandpa and whatnot. It's kind of like an old folk type of tale or saying in the automotive slash mechanic world. Uh, what that does is two things. It gets rid of, uh, if there's any like grease or debris on those rotors still, or on, I don't think they put some on the brake pads. And another thing it does is it helps seat the, the pads as well. So. Again, don't know if you really need to do that, but I just kind of do it. It's kind of a habit. 
But we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. That's pretty much how we do, or how I do brakes and rotors on my 2016 Ram 1500. Hopefully this video helps you out. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them down below. I'll do my best to get to them. But uh, in the meantime, go ahead, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It motivates me to do more of this kind of content. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next video. So it's a nice day outside. I'm gonna go enjoy it. Have a good one. Thank you guys for watching. To show you guys what these pads were looking like. I was wondering what all that scraping sound was. <laughs>